What's up, Make Pop Music? It's Austin here from Make Pop Music and Austin Hall Audio and Visual, and we are back with another video. And this week, we're gonna be covering something that you guys have requested, and that is how to make dark trap pop. So for this video in particular, we are gonna be looking at one of my songs. It's called 100 Ways. It's been out for a long time, so if you wanna check it out, there will be a link in the description. And we are gonna give away the free stems and multi-tracks to this, so if you wanna download those so you can follow along or so you can practice with them, head to the link in the description and you can get those as well as all of our other free stems. But for this video in particular, I wanted to break down everything that I added all of the tools, elements, and techniques that I used to kind of create a song in that dark trap pop genre. And it's going to be similar to artists such as Always Never, Anders, uh, Manila Gray, any of those style artists that are very drum and kind of bass forward. And then they really just drive it home with those R&B kind of silky melodies over the trap instrumentals. So we're going to be looking at everything that I added. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments down below and I'll try to answer those. But without further ado, let's actually just hop into the DAW and take a look at everything that went into this project. All right, now we're in the DAW. So this is a super simple project. Since it's already out if you want you can go listen to it with a link in the description but I'm not going to take up too much of the video time showing you you know what the song sounds like or doing like a full recap at the end like we normally do let's just go ahead and start I will give you just a little bit of a kind of taste of the verse and the chorus so this is what it kind of sounds like at the end I've been sitting here sipping on the clear tequila pulled over rice I see you there and I dress you well and then here's the chorus we have can I persuade you I wanna take you right back to my place, yeah and this right here is the entire project. So let's go ahead and we'll kind of walk through in the steps that I remember kind of creating this song in. So this song really started with this key melody, which is funny because it's not even that heard in the final version, but this all started with this little melody and I had just gotten a plugin called Easy Keys and they had this Dream Machine, which is like this bell, like, it's almost like a Synclavier meets like a Rhodes and it's got some super spacey presets. So I remember I found one called Interstellar and it sounded like this. And I just boosted a ton of top end just with a shelf. These sounds in this plugin are pretty dark generally, so I didn't want to do anything too crazy to it because I like the overall tone. And then I just EQ'd it and then I knew that I needed something a little bit uh, kind of denser on top. So that is also from that plugin. It's just a different preset. This one is called Pogba. And this one has a little bit more of that kind of like music box quality where it's it's got like the actual kind of bell transient. And that's really it. The only thing I did to this was I added halftime to give me this nice little counter melody kind of built in. And I have that set to half loop and then I just have the wet set to like 70%. So we have. And then I just did some EQ to take out some of those lows because it was a little muddy, especially after adding halftime and then just boosted some of that high. And this is what we have for that bell. And that really is the main synth the entire time. We layer it up a little bit in the chorus and we'll get to that later, but that is like the real meat behind the actual key section. So once I had those, I wanted to start throwing in some weird little ambient pads. I was kind of thinking like The Weeknd meets like Always Never, and I really wanted this to kind of be ambient. And then when I added those drums, it just became really, really hard hitting. So I pulled up this preset in Anna 2 called Animal Speak, and it sounds a little something like this. And I just played that kind of root note that was in the melody that I was playing before. So I didn't play any of that kind of right hand melody. It was literally just the sustained chords on the left hand. And that's all I did for that. And then I just had these two pads that I created in Serum specifically for this track. And they're just kind of pedaling on one note. And the first one sounds like this. It's a pad I made called Exorcist. If you want with the stems, I'll throw in any of the Serum presets and I'll throw in um, the 808 because I know I'm going to get questions on that. So when you download those, there will be a little folder that says Serum Presets and that will have any of those in there. Yeah. 
So this is a really cool preset. It's actually much more simple than it sounds. Um, it's just got some movement going along with these uh, wavetable positions right here. And since they're part of the um, digital and like spectral wave forms, they get really, really weird very quickly. So just doing that with some different blending and then kind of operating some of these different LFOs to different things just really gave me this nice little bit of movement where it wasn't just a sustained pad. Just adds a nice little bit of movement in there and adds a nice little bit of variation. And then I kind of did something similar with another pad called Graveyard. I think this is in one of our free packs, but again, I'll throw it in the stem download. And this one almost has like some of those like reverbed out kind of wave calls. It's a really weird sound, but it's really fun. And it kind of added this nice little bit of top in. And then the last thing that we have going for the synths in the entire verses is this big kind of guitar hit that I found actually in Cubase's stock kind of ambient guitar library. If you go to right here, you can find all of the stock stuff that comes with Cubase. And one of them just had this kind of like really, really weird uh, vibey guitar. And it sounded a little something like this. Almost reminds me of like the Thriller sound from Michael Jackson or something you'd hear in like a weekend song. And all I did was I just dragged them out to really create like this drone effect. And then once I did that, I just kind of pitched them. So we're literally just kind of pedaling on this note. And then when we go to the chorus later, we'll kind of start changing the notes around. But that was all just done by manually tuning it. And then I just put on little Alter Boys to kind of bring it into the key. And then I put on Track Spacer. I don't even really know if it's doing too, too much. I really just have it ducking for when the 808 hits. And that's kind of the meat and potatoes behind the keys for the verses and the pre-choruses. And then the only other things I have are these two kind of reverb plucks from one of the cashmere packs. And I just have that on the first beat just to give us a little bit of urgency. It's kind of like a nice little melodic downshift. So we just have this. All right, now let's get to where the real fun starts, and that is with the drums and the bass. So the drums on this track are pretty typical, just kind of trap drums. They're all, I think, from Splice. Like here we have a kick called the New Styles Kick. I think it's from one of their like trap packs. And so we just have. And it's knocking pretty hard. We've just, yeah, again, got that cinematic guitar kind of side chain to that. And then uh, we're just doing a little baby, baby amount of EQ to make sure that it's going to poke out below the 808. And then we also have some snares over here. And these sound a little bit something like this. So we've got this uh, hold up one snare right here that's got this nice little like reverb tail built in. And then I'm just doing the stutter hits with a snare called the hold up three snare. It's from the same exact pack. And then I'm actually just doing kind of this band pass cutoff right here so we can make sure that it's not getting any uh, crazy frequencies that are poking out because I just want it as like this nice little ambient percussive hit in the background. I don't want it as like a main snare on top, so. And that's pretty much the snare and the kick through the whole thing. And then we have this little Foley loop right here. Uh, I believe this one is either from our Foley Fix pack or Sounds of Life, probably Foley Fix. And without anything, it sounds like this. And then I just added some Bit Crusher and some Chorus to kind of give it some width and some different texture. Kind of made it a little bit shorter and snappier too. And then we have this hi-hat loop from Splice and it's just one of their trap loops at 135. I just pitched it or I just time aligned it to 130. But what I did for the first half of the verse is I actually manually chopped it. And then for the second half and for the choruses, I just have it playing out like normal. And then for the second half of the verse, we go into. And that just really helps us kind of pick up that tempo to make sure that it's not going to get too stale. And then on top of these snares, I like to put some kind of ambient noises, especially if it's not going to be something that's like a super dry, hard hitting hip hop song, something that's a little bit more kind of ambient and kind of melodic like this. I like to have some roomy hits. So I put the snap behind the snares. And then what I do a lot of the time, you've probably seen me do this before, is I'll like alternate different tonal percussive hits. So on snare one, I have this. And then on snare two, I have this. And those just go back and forth just to give me a little bit of extra space and uh, kind of texture on top. So. I 
I like playing around with any kind of like rhythmic melody whenever I can. So if I can find a drum that's kind of tonal and I can add a nice little note in there that will kind of sit with the synths, it's a really good way for me to just add a little bit of extra texture. Uh, and then we also have this kind of hip hop crash. And then we've got some open hats on this backbeat and those are just super simple. And then the last thing we have is these kind of offbeat rim shots right here. And these just act as like stutter trap snares like you'd hear all the time. And with a kick and snare, so you can kind of hear the relation we have. Lots of cool little triplets in the song that kind of gave me that trap vibe that I really wanted, especially because I knew that the vocals and the synths were all so ambient and kind of atmospheric. I knew that I wanted these drums to really carry this kind of like super, super trappy vibe. Now that that's done, that's really all that we have for the verse. So we have these drums with these synths and it sounds exactly like this. Now we're gonna go into what the real shining star of this song is, and that is this 808. We get tons of requests to get this 808 patch, so I'm just gonna throw this in the stems as well. We've given it away a couple times, and it really is super simple. It's just this add seconds uh, wavetable that I use all the time when I'm making 808s. And then we're just kind of doing this little shift on the wavetable position to add some harmonics, and then we're just processing it with some distortion and some compression. And it sounds a little bit something like this. And I've actually increased that attack, so it's already like automatically side chaining to that kick, so we're not getting any weird low end buildup when that kick hits. And as you can see right here, I have the plus and minus set to 12 on the pitch bend, and that is because this song was very kind of dependent on me doing those pitch bends. And this is really before like drill got super popular, so like before Pop Smoke and CJ and all those artists over here started doing that drill sound. Um, so at the time, this felt super fun. It was kind of fresh and unique. Uh, not so much anymore, but I always love hearing a really good pitch bend. And what I do is I literally just put the pitch bend automation right here, and I just draw it in manually so you can kind of see it. And I just did a tip on this on our Instagram. So if you want, we do have an IGTV story where I basically talk about multiple ways that you can add pitch bends. I like doing them with a pitch bend wheel and then just going into the MIDI and refining them, but I easily could have just put the portamento up and played this. It just would have been a little bit different feel. Uh, so now that 808 and these synths and these drums is literally all that is in this verse. All right, now we can get to the vocals. We have a couple of different things that are happening that are kind of vocal effects. We have a little reverse vocal and then we have a couple vocal shouts. So we've got this right here. And then we have this breath right here. And then for the entire song, we have one main vocal going. We'll kind of layer that up later, but through the verses in particular, we just have this one main vocal and it sounds a little bit something like this. I've been sitting here, sipping on the clear tequila pot of her eyes. I see you there and I dress you wear a goddamn. And this is an old vocal chain, so I don't even use the CLA-2A now. I've switched to the Slate one, and I'm using a couple different DSers now, but generally, this is typically what I'll do. So auto-tune, get everything sitting really right, and then I'll go in with virtual mix rack. And since I used the Slate ML1, I've got the FG800 since it kind of fits right in that genre. Again, just using the FGN, which I typically always use, and then the 116, so a modern style 1176 compressor, and then just doing some EQ stuff. Now I'm onto Pro-Q3. I even added it a little bit later in one of the revisions, so we have that over here, but it's really not doing anything crazy, so I don't wanna highlight that vocal mix too, too much. But throughout the entire song, we have that track duplicated and then spread out with a doubler and pitched down an octave. And that continues through the whole thing. So you can see the two tracks right here are pretty much always going together. Um, kind of a weird thing to do, but it works really, really well for this song. And then in the second half of the verse, I pull in this high vocal. And I had this before and it wasn't super hard tuned and it wasn't super weird and kind of ambient like that, but it actually sit way better when I more so used it as a textural element and not something that was 
like a, tr a typical kind of vocal stack. So once I kind of just used that for like texture, cause I really didn't want it to be that discernible. It really just sat really nicely in the mix. Uh, baby, you know that I'm bad, but let me take you to the back, yeah. I see the look in your eyes, I know you And then I've just got these little ad libs right here. So just these, yeah. And then I have a little run right here. Back, yeah. I see the look in your eyes, I know you wanna take a crack, yeah. We get dip out of the club and head on over to my pay, yeah. Hopping around and split him. Vocals on this song are super wet, super ambient, uh, just really fit the style. And especially with such hard hitting drums, I needed something that wasn't going to be super dry because then it just would have leaned straight into a hip hop track. And I definitely wanted it to have more of that kind of pop kind of sheen and more of that R&B uh, kind of alternative R&B laid back feel. So with the vocals and everything, we have this so far. I've been sitting here as a banana clear, tequila pulled over rice. I see you there now. Then we go on to the faster hats and pull in that extra high vocal. And that is all that we have for the verse. So it's the same in the first and the second verse pretty much. Um, I'll differentiate that when we get to it in a second. But for now, let's go to this pre-chorus. So for the pre-chorus, we're dropping out that ambient guitar. We're keeping the rest of the synth, so the two bells, the pad that's kind of following the bass line, and then the two just ambient kind of sustaining pads. We add in this big impact right here. Bags, yeah. And we swap to a bass pad instead of this 808. So this will also be in that, in that pack with the stems and presets, but uh, a lot of you probably already have this. We've given this away multiple times. It's just kind of like a Reese wide, kind of gnarly uh, bass pad. Really, really good for this genre. And it's got like this weird thing happening in the high end where it's like almost like bit rate kind of like warbling. And it just, I don't know, it comes through on the mix really, really nice. And it just makes everything sit in a little bit better. So now that we're into this, we have the main vocal going, we have the low vocal going. And then right here on the ad lib track, I, I actually treated this more like a harmony, but I really liked the way it sounded processed like an ad lib. So we have this. And then I've got these harmonies now. So we're starting to build up the vocal arrangement. I'll tell you all the things I wanna do. We'll spend the night locked in a hotel room. We'll have a drink and maybe have a few. That's just to me and you. And that's really all that's happening with those keys that we've already had. No drums and just that bass pad. I'll tell you all the things I wanna do. So the key here was I really wanted to bring down that energy because we have a pretty big verse happening and I wanted to go into an even bigger chorus. And the only way that you can really do that without exhausting your listener is giving them a second to catch their breath. So that's exactly what this pre-chorus is. And then for the chorus, all the drums stay the same. We're just adding a few on top. So let's see. Everything up to this open hat right here is the same. We just add a sweep impact. Really cool. And then we add an extra hi-hat loop. So I like adding extra loops when it comes to the chorus because it'll give us this extra kind of dimension and movement. And this is like a little bit looser. So it's going to give us a little bit more sustain on that hi-hat. And that's pretty much all that's happening with those drums. Literally the same exact pattern and pretty much the same thing happening with the 808 as well. The key for the 808 to make it a little bit different was I actually sustained some of the notes in extra kind of two measures. So right here, it would normally cut off at like 34 and a half, but I just dragged it all the way to 35. And that just gave us a little bit of extra sustain to make it feel a little bit more like a chorus and not a verse where it's so short and choppy. Uh, the synths all stay the same. Like I said earlier, we still have that kind of cinematic gated guitar, but this time we're actually following the melody. Then we're going to this. So we're really just pedaling on those two notes and then I went ahead and layered that bell up with a harder bell. This one's also from Easy Keys, but this is the mallet piano. And then we're just processing that again with halftime and some reverb. So with nothing, it sounds a little bit something like this. Still has that music box quality, but this one almost has like some tremolo built in and it's kind of weird. And then we added that halftime doing the same thing that we did to the spacey bells earlier.
And then we added this reverb to really push it out a little bit wider and a little bit farther in the back. And then just cleaned up some of that low end because with this big of an 808, you really don't need a ton of low end in the sense and stuff like that. Otherwise it gets very just kind of muddy and low mid heavy. So we have that and then we have these Rhodes hits that are just doing this kind of like staccato-y vibe over here and that's with the Mellotron. And that's pretty much it, not doing anything crazy. And then we had this little counter melody. So first time in the song that we have a counter melody, and that is with a patch that a lot of you probably also have called Dream Killer. Um, it'll be in the pack as well. And it's just this really cool kind of like, almost like a sign, but it's got a little bit extra pop. So the key was I wanted something super ambient. I wanted something super kind of clean but could still be discernible in the full mix, and you kind of get that right here. And then we just have this little reverb pluck right here happening on the backbeat, so. Just to give us a cool little, like, uh, pop over that snare. So we added those couple synth elements, we added those, uh, that little impact and then those extra hi-hats and then the bass stayed the same we just lengthened it out a little bit and then the vocals is really where we make it different so for this we actually are starting to have vocal stacks we have that main vocal we have that low vocal can i persuade you i want to take we have those ad libs coming in we also have those high harmonies that we kind of started in the pre-chorus can i persuade you i want to take you right back to my place yeah and we're starting to pull in vocals on the side, so we have two more takes of that original melody, and we're just panning those out 100% left and right. So main vocal in the middle, main vocal on the left, main vocal on the right, harmony on the left, harmony on the right, ad libs kind of coming in. Can I persuade you? I wanna take you right back to my place, yeah. And then a lot of the time what I like to do in a chorus just to give it a little bit of extra depth and so I don't have to make a hundred different sins or automate a bunch of stuff like crazy is sometimes I'll just duplicate the main vocal and pop on an extra kind of big reverb 100% wet and I'll just mix that into take. So we have that here. And that's just in the background and then we have these little delay throws. Right back to my place, yeah. And it's really just accenting stuff that was kind of already there, so really it's the same thing that we had in the pre-chorus, just with an extra main melody on the left and on the right, and then we have the big reverb and the big delay throws uh, to really make sure that that tail kind of carries over with a little bit denser arrangement. And that is all that's happening in that chorus, so other than that it's exactly the same. And then moving on, we kind of break it down for the first half of the second verse, so right here, we're almost taking it to something that's a little bit more like the pre-chorus. So now I have the high vocal starting at the first half of the second verse, and we've taken away the drums and we've gone to that kind of ambient bass pad. And then I wanted to pull in some ear candy, so I do this nice little start stop, and then we go into the hard hitting verse. And that's just doing that by pulling in a kick and then having that same 808 do some bass slides. So really nothing crazy. It sounds a lot more impressive than it actually is. And then I guess I'll go over what I did on this vocal because I know I'll get some questions on that. Uh, to do that kind of like Black Bear style format shifting, all you do is literally in Autotune or Melodyne or whatever you're using that can do a format shift or a throat shift, you literally just automate it down. So watch this. And then it just goes back to normal. So really you can automate that with your mouse, you can draw it in, you can kind of do whatever you need to do. And then other than that, we pull in some ad libs for the second half and we're pulling in these extra little staccato spacey keys, similar to kind of what the Rhodes is doing on the chorus, but they're a little bit spacier. And that's just using hybrid keys. They're super wet, super wide, and they kind of have this weird warbly chorus effect happening. So we're using that instead of kind of having that Rhodes that was super clean and uh, kind of dry and stabby. I know I'm not the guy that you can take on to 
Please don't get way too attached You know that why we in a match, yeah. I ain't trying to break your heart And then we're literally going into exactly the same pre-chorus So I'm not even gonna cover that, it's just right here I'll tell you all the things I And then this chorus is exactly the same literally the only difference is that now we also added those staccato spacey keys that we added from that second verse so those are sitting on top and it's just kind of complementing this original road sit from the first chorus and that is it for that second chorus nothing else changed vocals all stayed the same and then we go into what would be the bridge. It's more like a breakdown and it's kind of weird, but it's super, super fun. So we're going to the kick, the snare. It's basically all the drums and percussion except any hi-hats or kind of Foley effects. And so we have this going for the drums and this little breakdown right here. And we have the bass that kind of has been going the entire song. And we're just pulling the synths way back, so we've got these chorus bells right here. So instead of having that little counter melody, they're more so just kind of doing these big sustained kind of piano style hits uh, on top of the original bells. And for the vocal right here, we're literally just doing this really, really like gnarly, super affected vocal. So we have this. And it's super similar to the vocals that we have earlier in the song, basically up to here. And then I added Crystallizer, which is this really cool delay that also adds in these like granular reverse delays. So that's where we're getting that kind of reverse swell. And then I wanted to add in some chorus and some flanger to give us this weird kind of like phasey effect that kind of goes back and forth. I added Decapitator to give us a little bit of distortion. And then I just added some EQ to really tame that up. And I added some delay right here to give us a little bit of extra sustained delay that's not reversing into itself. So all of that together kind of creates a super ambient vocal. And we're just automating that four minute control like we did on that one little passage earlier. We're just doing that throughout this entire bridge. And then I have these little ooze and these are all saying this is what it sounds like with no processing. Super hard tuned, there's like probably five takes in there, and then I'm just compressing and then I'm adding the studio chorus. Adding a bunch of reverb and delay to really make it spacey. Adding in some pro cue right here to filter it out because I don't need most of that information. Adding on kickstar right here that almost acts as like a tremolo. And then a phaser to give me even more space. And then we do that same thing, just pitch down an octave. And that is literally it for that little bridge breakdown. And then going into this last chorus, we add a couple things. We have those ooze kind of carrying over, so we have those underneath all of these vocals now. And then we're pulling in one more organ right here to give us a little bit of extra poke. And the organ, it kind of has a built-in rotary, so it's kind of doing a little bit of panning back and forth. Gives us a cool little bit of dimension, and then we're pulling in an extra snap on here for the last one. So we've got one big crash, and then these extra kind of bit crush snaps. So all together for this last chorus, sounds a little something like this. Can I persuade you? I wanna take you right back to my place, yeah. And then it literally just goes into an instrumental fade out. So I just chopped up that bridge vocal, added that nice little start stop right here to kind of, I don't know, make it really exciting one time before it ends. 
chopped up that riser so I get that nice little triplet, almost like a Marvel movie would sound. And that is literally the entire song. Now that we've done everything, I'll go back and I'll show you the intro. The intro is literally just all of these things merged down. So the bass pad that we talked about, um, and then the synths from the verses, and I literally just comped them down to one thing and then filtered them out, added some phaser, added some chorus, and then just kind of downshifted them. You can see this is kind of opening as we go. I've been sitting here. And then I just gave it that nice little tape stop right there. And that is the complete song. If you want, again, we will be giving away the stems. If you want to follow along, you can. If you want to practice mixing on them, you can. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. But yeah, that is the full project for my track 100 Ways. And that does it. That's everything that I added for my song 100 Ways. As you can see, it's a super simple arrangement. There's really only a couple things happening here and there. This song is super dependent on having some really knocking drums, a really, really smooth 808, and then having those nice kind of airy vocals over top with some of the more ambient sense filling and the space behind that. So uh, when you're working in the genre, just remember simple is key. Normally you can get by with some nice drums, either an 808 or some big swelling bass pad. And really then the sense can be kind of minimal behind that as long as you have a really good vocal melody. So if you like this video, let us know. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments down below. And if you want to like, comment, and subscribe, that definitely helps out the channel a ton. If you want to check out any more of our stuff, head over to makepopmusic.com where you can check out all of our free and paid content. We've got courses, samples, presets, blog posts, links to all of our other videos. So head over there and check it out. But that's going to be it for now. So until next time, take care, much love, and peace out, everyone.